So next, let's uh, talk about an Oracle attack. And we've actually already talked about some situations where uh, an Oracle is essentially based upon some information, some data feed, and that data feed uh, could be manipulated. So we're already quite familiar uh, with this, but Oracles are another on the list of issues in DeFi. So we've already talked about things like what is the optimal governance? What is the best consensus protocol? Well, Oracles are, are another issue that um, there's still a lot of research on as to how to actually uh, do this. So um, Oracles, as I've described previously, are a way to get information into a blockchain that doesn't actually e exist on the chain. So that information needs to be obtained outside. And it might be a market price uh, from, for example, uh, you know, an exchange. It, it might be uh, some other type of data but you need to go outside. And when you go outside, that immediately creates risk. And we talked about some of the risk in terms of kind of manipulating uh, the data source, but there's a host of other issues that are involved here. So the, the key thing is the Oracle needs to be reliable. So you need to agree upon uh, like a, the Oracle. So if you're entering into a contract, people need to agree uh, what the Oracle actually is. Okay, so it might be, uh, for example, you put, and this is a completely different application, you put some information into a smart contract, um, like a will. And there would be payouts if there is a record of death of the person that provided liquidity to that smart contract. So you need an oracle to figure out if that person is alive or dead. And you need to agree upon that. So that oracle might be, for example, the social security database. And the program would go outside of a blockchain and check that database to see if the person was alive or dead. If the person's deceased, then the tokens are deployed to certain addresses. Okay, so uh, again, this has got to be uh, very secure and, you know, little things like uh, the website to get that information might actually change. So you get like a 404 going to um, that particular website and then all of a sudden the funds could be uh, bricked in the smart contract. So again, all of this stuff needs to be uh worked out. And the economics are really uh, straightforward here, that, um, that exploiters are going to figure out what the, um, the cost of corruption is and the potential profit from corruption of the oracle. They do a simple calculation. If the profit's greater, then they will attack. There's different types of oracles, of course. There's um, uh, a shelling point oracle, um, and this is where you rely upon uh, a number of voters. So there's a fixed supply of tokens that are actually voted. Um, and a good example of this is Augur, uh, which has got a number of interesting markets. You should look them up. Uh, but, but the oracle is really important in terms of the outcomes. So again, even something simple like a sports event, uh, there needs to be a feed that tells you what the final uh, score is. And it could be really complicated because there could be a winner declared, but then the next day maybe there's a disqualification. So you need to work in all of these possibilities. Um, so one issue with an oracle uh, like the shelling point is it's not very quick. And often within decentralized finance, we need speed. So there's other types of oracles like API oracle, and this is what Chainlink uh, actually uses. And Chainlink is uh, probably 
in my opinion, the leading company at this point in terms of Oracle uh, technology. Um, and, and, and basically, the, uh, the turnaround uh, in terms of the getting the information is a lot uh, faster. So um, application-specific uh, oracles, very uh, popular. So we've already talked about the maker uh, oracle, which is used, uh, Compound also. So there's um, uh, Compound, for example, relies upon a single uh, data provider. Um, so other protocols might have a, a mixture, uh, a portfolio of different data providers. Again, all of these are choices that are really important. So uh, there's so many layers of risk in, in DeFi that we're learning. You know, smart contract risk is, is way up there. Governance risk is rare, but it's still a big risk. But Oracle risk is, is really high on the list of important uh, uh, factors. So um, we know that uh, these on-chain oracles could be front-run. And again, let me emphasize, when we talk about front-running in DeFi, this is not illegal. Everything is open. Everything is public. Okay, so um, it's also the case that DeFi relies upon all of these Legos that are interoperable, that are operating 24-7. There's no holiday. There's no downtime. So we've, we've had situations where there have been outages uh, in Chainlink and, and Maker. And when there's no Oracle, then basically the DeFi protocol stops working. You can't do anything. So you go out for the data that you need, and the data doesn't exist. So, so basically, the transaction just stops, or it reverts to the original uh, state. So this is important. Um, it is an ongoing uh, issue. There could be a whole course on, on oracles and how to construct them, the different types, and the different risks. But this is definitely a top three risk.